Welcome in to a DNVR Avalanche emergency podcast as the Avs have uh, made their move, as it were, for a two-center. Uh, they acquire Ryan Johansson from the Nashville Predators for Alex Galchenyuk, which essentially this is nothing, uh, and Nashville is retaining half of Ryan Johansson's salary. That means that there is two years left on Ryan Johansson's deal, and the Avs will be charged $4 million per year against the salary cap for him. Uh, now, Ryan Johansson is not a name we've really talked about, but conceptually, a move like this was definitely on the table for the Avs. We talked about it extensively with Kevin Hayes being the name we had thrown out as as someone who gets retained a little bit, and the Avs solve that 2C spot for more than one year. I'll throw it to you guys. How do we feel about Ryan Johansson? Well, dude, like you just mentioned there, like when we, we, we said if they decide to go the trade route, it just opened up the options so much wider and it left the door open for something like this that we didn't really see. M- my thing with it is given what they gave up, look, I liked Alex Galchenyuk last year when he was here. Nice perseverance, nice little story trying to make the comeback. Uh, but given what he was, your organization, how you got Alex Galchenyuk, essentially two different PTOs, that all being that you're giving up, you're getting a player that at bare minimum, you're going to give a solid look to at 2C. Like that's what you're bringing him in here for. And you get it at 50% retained. Even if you don't love Ryan Johansson, the player, I, I think it's hard to not like this deal for CMAC. Yeah, I mean, we had we had agreed on yesterday's show that if the Avs were able to get Kevin Hayes at five million per year for the next three years, completely for free for future considerations, we would do it. Now, the big difference here: Kevin Hayes was coming off a career year, mm-hmm. and Brian Johansson is not. Um, but ultimately, this is the same thing, except it's cheaper in money, it's shorter in term. Uh, but it's it's higher in, I think, question marks and uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Um, he had kind of a weird fluke season uh, in that he had a skate blade, I think, cut his Achilles, I believe. And that's what caused him to miss as many games as he did. It's kind of 20, weird that the Avs... Five games or something like that. Yeah, it's missed, weird the Avs want to dance around with that. <laughs> but the, this is a, they solved their 2C problem completely for free. Like, yep. if Alex Galchenyuk, for some reason, is watching this, I'm sorry, but it's completely mm-hmm. for free. Like, he's a pending UFA and a guy that was on their AHL team last year. Well, it and it's, been, it's the pending it UFA been... status that really makes this, like, <laughs> it. you didn't even know if he was coming back. It, yeah, I mean, it could have been it's it could have been sample ranta. It doesn't really matter. This is a guy that was yeah. a Colorado Eagle last year, predominantly, and was and may not figure into the NHL club next year. So, um, I mean, you're talking you're talking about like right right. Johansson's a pretty interesting guy. Um, I would say the one thing that I don't love is just watching him. He's a guy that controller disconnects a little bit more often than I would like. Um, no, fucking tape job, dude. I, I know I've openly <laughs> shit-talked that tape job on this show before. Uh, so, okay. it, this, one's, this one's tough for me. On the one hand, look, this guy's only 30. It's only right. two years. So you're not, like, super worried about that side of it. However... He is somewhat injury prone, especially in the last couple of years. And his production has been a little bit all over the place. All over the place, man. There are years where he's much closer to a 40 point guy. In 21 22, he was a 60 point guy. You go back in his career and he's he's bounced all over the place. He has one 70 point season in Columbus, I guess. But he's got a 30 goal season, I think it was back in 2015. Like all over the place is 100% right. Yeah, well, and Johansson's interesting because, you know, he was traded one for one for Seth Jones when he was 22. Yeah. Because he had, he had had, I think, a 30 goal season and then a 26 goal season when he was 20 and 21 in Columbus. And it looked like he was going to be like mm-hmm. a 1C 
And when that did not come to fruition in Nashville, for whatever reason, it never clicked again until last year when it was career year time for every single guy in, in the that. Preds organization. Uh, and then he immediately went right back to not being that guy again. It's it's really like his career has been odd more than anything. I mean, he's got great size. He's he's very clearly like very talented. Yeah. You just you just wonder has he just never played in an environment outside of those first couple of years in Columbus yep. that really taps into this guy it really allows him to spread the offensive wings a little bit it's so i was gonna i was about to ask you guys and look this is what everyone says when you trade for a player like this you know that you're trying to get on the bounce back but given the the way that nashville has you know played in the past the way they like to play very defensive heavy in their systems do you guys think that there's a chance that he comes here and look the abs pro scouting has been very good at this in the last handful, you know, in this management era of identifying players that say these guys do things well that we do well? Like, do you think that there's a chance that for that here with him where it's like he's just going to get into a better situation, a better system for his skill set? I think it will be better. I don't know how much better. Obviously, that's always hard. But you're you're correct in the fact that Forever, Nashville has been a team that has played their offense through their defense, right? Mm-hmm. They have, like, to an extreme amount. Uh, the modern abs do play through their defense a decent amount, but what Nashville has been for most of Johansson's career is, like, super, super defense-oriented when it comes from settling for shots from the point. Settling's not even the right word. They were They wanted shots from the point. They targeted ways to run things through their defense, which the Avs don't do in the when they're in the offensive zone as much. They do a ton of that on the rush. But with Johansson specifically, and I know we're going to get into some of his underlyings here that aren't that great, but I look at this and I say, look, the Avs got him for half retained. At $4 million, it's not that hard for Johansson to give you value. Assuming this Achilles thing is fine and he's healthy enough to – play the same way he did a year or two ago. He doesn't need to have a career year to be effective for Colorado. You would love him to get back to that 60 point guy and, and be an effective two C that's why the abs went out and got him is because they think he can be that guy. Yeah. Is he the guy he was in Columbus? I don't know. Is he guy, is he better right. than he showed in Nashville? I think probably at least the last mm-hmm. couple of years in Nashville. It's not, I mean, it's not fair to ask him to be, that guy he was in Columbus at the very start when he just hasn't been for a decade. So. Right. 30 goals, 70 points. It's like, yeah. yeah. That's... The, but here's I, mean... the one thing that I, I also wanted to circle back to you. Cause I think the three of us talked about this on Tuesday or something like that, but the abs getting out ahead of the market. Yep. Like, like you pay so little in this transaction. And I'm not saying that, that would have drastically changed if another center had been moved. But if there is a, a market that is set out there, well, then maybe it costs you a little bit more. Them essentially doing like the first deal of the, uh, you know, of, of draft week, you got to yeah. pay the price that you wanted to pay. Yeah, we, we did talk about that, um, that the not putting yourselves in the position that they yes. were in with Kemper means that they could pay a cheaper price, a price that they were more comfortable with, meant that they had more options. I mean, the thing, the thing, the, the the reality is when you look at his career and you look at what he was able to do in Nashville, did he live up to the 1C thing that they wanted yeah. from him? He just didn't. Doesn't the answer is no. Have to be no. a 1C in Colorado. They, went, oh, they yeah. went and got Matt Duchesne for a reason. Like, they yeah. went and paid Matt Duchesne the same money because they were like, whoops, that didn't work. Let's try again with this guy. But... I, I mean, I don't, it's, it's just not as bad as, as some, I, I, it's just not that bad. Like you have, you have a couple of 50 and 60 point seasons in here and health is a factor. That's a concern. You want him to be healthy. His underlings aren't amazing. That's a concern. 
they're not terrible. I they're not like brutally bad or anything where you're like, yeah. oh man, what did they get themselves into? If you get into some of the micro stats, I'm a little more worried about that. Yeah. Because where he struggles is where the abs don't struggle and where he's better uh, with the, when it comes to more producing off of a cycle versus a rush is an area the abs need to be better in, but it's also like you kind of are who you are. You should, mm-hmm. you know, and there's a conversation about leaning into you that. To find a way to fit despite yeah. doing things a little bit differently. Sure. There's two, there's two other things there. There's two other things we haven't talked about here. He is right-handed, which really helps their power Especially play. Especially if yeah. they're losing JT Comfer. It really which... helps their power play and his face-off ability. He's way yes. better than JT Comfer at face-offs. Yeah, he's so good now, at that. Now they have that guy. So uh, Pierre Lebrun did put out, uh, and it's just a report, said that his source are telling the abs have not closed the door on uh, attempting to re-sign JT Comfer. So yeah. Or, or for the record, or Evan Rodriguez. They have been in talks with both. Uh, we will see. Um, I mean, those guys. Those guys have every reason to get close to the market and figure out. You know, the, the it, tampering period may be gone, but tampering is not. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's part of the value of getting Johansson for four million dollars, right? Is you should have the money to bring yes. one of those dudes back. Yep, and 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 really, it, it's it's not even just that, but it's also the money that they could go out and if they wanted to get a defenseman that a team wanted to give away. Sure, like, sure. just spitballing here, but say the Boston Bruins were looking to move some money out. If there's a guy there that the Avs wanted to try and poach, having solving your 2C issue for just $4 million, it leaves them with about $15 million in cap space. And now they only need to fill one wing spot. Yep. Uh, and then three bottom six spots. That's- Call it a million dollars each, for which, the which spots, are so, your yeah. cost efficient spots, and then uh, you have one defenseman spot and two RFA deals in Byram and, and Newhook. Yep, for fifteen million dollars, uh, fifteen million should be sufficient to do all that. Yeah, I mean, th- this is part of the, <laughs> a lot of what you just said there, AJ, is why I, I like this deal so much. I just think getting it done now at the price that you did. There, yeah, there's plenty to talk about in terms of Johansson, the player, and health and all of that stuff. But I just think this is such a good roll of the dice, given the caliber of player that you are potentially getting back. Uh, you know, even if he can get – I said on the video that is up on our on the DNVR Avalanche Twitter, if you're expecting him to be 65 to 70 point guy, you're going to be disappointed. Probably. Like you, just, you just are. But if you're – looking to get a solid second line center that could give you 50 plus 50 to 60. Uh, I think that's what you're going to get. And for $4 million and now you can check this off the list. AJ, I think you, I think it was you who tweeted out earlier this week or last week. I just want the apps to do something at two C so we can stop thinking about it. Yep. And you could, like, you could tell, so did they like, like, we just want this done so we can focus on the rest of our business. And again, in that video, I, we, I think you mentioned it on the show yesterday. You know, now, now I think it makes sense. They're probably going to make that pick because they didn't need to use the first round pick to go out and solve the 2C problem. They held on to assets. They saved money. Uh, I, I mean, this is more or less like a free agent signing given what you gave up. Yeah. You didn't have to move Devon Taves. You didn't have to move Sam Gerrard. Uh, is it? You didn't have to use the first. Is it worth mentioning that this is another one Columbus connection with McFarland? Yes. And yep. two, not just and that, Bednar. but he he did play forty games in the AHL for Jared Bednar. Yep. Oh, I didn't realize that. But yeah, Chris McFarland, the AGM, uh, when Columbus drafted Johansson. So the Columbus connection continues. <laughs> I, I do think the Bednar connection is interesting, though. AJ, you mentioned at That's times cool. Johansson gets a little bit floaty. Something traditionally Bednar absolutely hates but there is a bit of a player coach relationship there already. So does that maybe assuage some of those fears a little bit for the avalanche? No, Um, you got to do the job, man. You got to get into town and you got to do it. But this is where, this is where you're relying. If you're Chris McFarland and you're, and you're to how you're worried about this, this is where you're like, look, dude, he's going to be around Nathan McKinnon, not Matt Duchesne. 
yeah. he's gonna be he's gonna yeah. be around a culture that's actually won something. And to be honest with you, the Abs ended that era of Preds hockey mm-hmm. when they when they swept yep. a team a team full of all star like a team that had like five like all star seasons. They swept those guys and put the dagger in it and said these guys just aren't good enough. Mm-hmm. So. You're going to be, you know, Ryan Johansson's going to be coming into a different environment. Now, you know, the, you know, uh, what, what is it? The tiger doesn't change his stripes or whatever. Like, yeah. like he's, you're, you're not, he's not going to magically be your hardest working player or whatever. Like he's just, if he was going to do that, it was going to happen already. Right. But you are, you are talking about a guy like, He's gonna get he's gonna get into town and he's gonna he's gonna get exposed to a totally different culture in Colorado and a totally different level of accountability. There's going to be the, there's going to be a different expectation of here's here's life in Colorado. Here's what day to day being an avalanche is. And uh I I just think that that's a that's a that's considering that you just solved a, your two C problem for complete Free. free yeah you gave up nothing we were talking about like all the people that, that yesterday that were like elias or all week that have been like elias lindholm elias lindholm trade the farm for that guy well you've solved your 2c issue granted there is concern there there is risk there yeah, but you still yes. have the farm but you have the whole farm to continue to work with that's going to be really important because you either get you either get a prospect that you draft uh, next week or we talked about this on yesterday's show. Like you trade back in that second round, you trade back into the second round. You still get a, a prospect that you really like. You you either get two of them, or you use that second round pick on a Sharon Govich. And sure. hey, by the way, that's your wing next to Johansson, mm. and you're talking about a whole bunch of tidy business. So like this is. It, 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 there's concern here, okay? Like, I, I don't think that this is a grand slam. Yeah. I think this is a solid double. Yeah. They And, and the fact that it's, it's like, it's, it's almost like getting walked and stealing <laughs> second because it's, it doesn't cost you anything. You didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to get a base hit here. They gave it to you. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think that I, I didn't end it's being mentioned in chat. Uh, we've already mentioned it as well, but it is it is a two year commitment of four million dollars. Yeah, like this is so low, completely for free. It's so low risk, and I do want to talk about this in real you, quick. You, just this graph. Well, I was just going to say, relative to the salary, you went from <laughs> you somehow. Went from Nazem Kadri to your next two C got cheaper somehow. I don't know how they did that. Like <laughs> we all thought the Kadri deal was like, well, you're not going to find a better, a cheaper two C than that, and they did it somehow. It's it is interesting, and and one of the things I do want to take away from this graph, a little bit of a PP merchant, his whole career. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he's not a focal point on a power play, but I expect he's on the top unit. He takes the face-offs on the right side, just like we saw. He basically just takes JT Confer's job from last year. Like, yep. Play in the um, bumper spot. Yep. That Exactly, in that bumper spot, except just for my money, he's better than JT Confer is. Um, as, a, as a shooter, yeah. as a more willing shooter, I think that guy's he's not going to have nearly as much imposter syndrome as, as JT I, had. I don't even think that's PP limited. I think objectively offensively he's just better than jt confer in every way i i mean i would i would agree just they have they have pretty similar goal scoring histories because johansson can get a little trigger shy at times but he's still uh, able to produce in those years yeah i want to see i just i want to see how he does in colorado um i'm i'm more curious than excited but I'm definitely excited that I can stop thinking about this 2C bullshit now for a little mm-hmm. while. Because this is... And what I what I also really like about this is this does nothing to prevent them from re-signing Devon Taves next year. 
Yeah. If Landy, if Landy comes back and the cap goes up four million dollars or whatever, the Avs are right in the pocket to keep Devontae's. It also yep. it doesn't stop Alex Newhook from continuing to develop at center. He's probably yep. their three C right now. Ben Myers is probably their four C until they do something else to upset that that order. Oh. Right now, it's McKinnon, Johansson, Newhook, and Myers. The- AJ, that that's a great call out. That yeah, that's part of what is so nice. That that is such a good bit of bit. Or what feels like a good bit of business about this move it, is that it it helps them long term too. I, I just that's the part that <clears> I'm when I use the word I say stuck. I don't mean in a bad way. But like that's the part that I'm just stuck on is how little bringing in this player actually upset anything that they're doing. You barely lost anything on the move out. And the money that comes in is minimal. That, four million dollars, like that's you know right. We, At four we million dollars, that that's what you expect JT Comfer to be in, it, like exactly. If he if Johansson plays anywhere close to his career averages at four million dollars, you don't even care what line he's on. Like, seriously. It, well, and, and you almost are even hoping that it turns into this like. All right, well, next year Alex Newhook is the two C exactly, and exactly. Ryan Johansson can drop down to your third line, like. Again, I, I want to make sure that we keep AJ said a few times. Like, there are absolutely question marks here. Yeah. No question, no, no doubt. There are some question marks here. There's a little bit of a gamble, but I mean, these are the type of moves that you bet on. Like, like this is a move yep. that you feel really good about. And then going back to what you were saying, Rudy, about the relationship with Bednar, I'm with AJ that I don't really think it makes a difference. But the fact that you have Bednar signing off on this, saying like, "Yes, I've worked with this guy before. I know he's coachable. I know he's whatever." it just does give you an extra bit of confidence that like, okay, they feel confident about what they can do with this player. They have a track record of bringing guys like this in and getting more out of them than what they were getting in the, in their previous, you know, role, whether it be Taves, Lekkanen, obviously the big ones, Nachushkin, Josh Manson. They're saying we think we can get more than a $4 million player out of this guy. And the, the the actual money and what it costs you is where I just keep coming back to like how could you not like this? I'm just saying, but if they go and get Pierre Ingval to play on their second line now, mm-hmm. they might have the league's biggest second line <laughs> with Throw Johansson, Nachushkin, yeah. and Ingval. <laughs> I don't I'm not saying go do that. I actually don't want that. I'm just saying right now the makings of a second line with Nachushkin and Johansson is. So- some big boys. Well, here's the thing. If you're going full optimist with the Johansson thing, you're looking at a guy that if he's shooting, that's a guy who can drive your scoring on your second line. Should it at minimum help you on the power play to be productive, but should be able to do so on your second line as well. If he's not shooting as much and has gone back to more of a setup guy, you can throw a Miko Rantanen on that guy's wing and Mm -hmm. it should work. Gosh, if I know you don't like to split up Nate and Miko, but yeah, second line of Val Johansson and Miko Rantanen, that is just yeah. huge. Johansson's a guy who has a 50 assist season in his career. Let like, me, yeah. let, I'll just say, if you re-sign Evan Rodriguez and you go Lekin and McKinnon Rodriguez, we've seen that combination work. Yep, mm-hmm. It did not prevent Nathan McKinnon from getting a 100-point season or Arturi Lekin from having a career year or Evan Rodriguez from having a career year. Yeah. Like, if you wanted to split it up and do it that way, you could. Fine. Well, it's, all, it, it's also just one of those things that we just talked about earlier this week with defenseman and Jared Bednar. I, I can guarantee you we'll, at bare minimum, see that combination at some point. Mm-hmm. Nuchushkin, Johansson, Rantanen. Like, we will see that on the ice. And that's, I mean, all, all three of those dudes are over six foot three. So I want to. Wanna... The, oh, the other thing I would say is if this does not go well, like if it's a total absolute train wreck, yep. you're down to you get to the end of next year. One year, four million dollars is either an easy buyout or a an dump. easy yeah. dump it on Arizona, who's trying to get to the salary cap floor again. Yeah, with whatever money they can find. You know, that's where you you know the old attach a pick and or you just just retain another fifty percent and it's a two exactly million, yeah. you retain fifty percent and it's two million and you're just it's. Like, it's extremely easy to get out of yeah. if it doesn't go well, which is the one thing about when we were talking about Kevin Hayes, three years, you're like, boy, if it doesn't go well, you're kind of stuck. Yeah. This uh, is easy to get out of if it does not go well. So here's here's the pessimist take. 
and we kind of already mentioned that. Is he just a, only going to do anything on the power play and then be ineffective on both ends of five on five play? I mean, so you're saying ineffective, but that's league average. He's you're... league at right there. He's breaking even, basic, basically in everything. Which it's which, not it's not a chart that you look at and go, wow, that's sexy. We've look at him go. Like if he breaks even, he'll be okay in the Avs middle six, right? But the Avs are obviously looking to get more value than that here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, you're never looking to bring in just a guy that can be on the power play, but again, that's where I think to AJ's point, you're saying, okay, cool, we can take this average player and we plug him into our system, and, and we think that we can get more than just an average player out of him. You know, he, he's going to have to be solid on the defensive side. Using Alex Galchenyuk as the reference point, obviously very different players, very different spots in their career. But that was that was their thing with him. Even through all the injuries, they said, we need this guy to be better in his own end to fit into this system. So Johansson's going to have to be a little bit better in his own end. You want to see him shoot a little bit more. He's going to be asked to drive a bit on that second line. Um, of course, you want to see those things go up, but – Again, I mean, I think you'll take a league average 2C over the kind of revolving door that you had there last year. Obviously, JT Comfort did a lot of that, but um, that doesn't concern me too much right now. If we get into December and it's still looking the same or worse, you don't love it, but average, I can live with. Fair enough. I, I really do think you know, obviously pending results of, of play. The Avs deserve a lot of credit for being a little bit of a vulture here. I I agree with you, and one of the last things I wanted to look up to prove that point, I wanted to see what his PDO was last year. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see, because I know that you want to talk about revolving door of line mates. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine that that guy on a second line on a team that thought it was going to be decent and ended up not so great, um, and then ended up selling off a bunch of guys. I, I would be willing to bet that he saw quite a quite a bit around him. And uh, would anybody be surprised if he had a scoring boost this year in Colorado in which yeah. his on-ice shooting percentage went up from last year's 6.9? Hey, <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> um... I mean, dude, look, I, I've said it a couple times already, and you can't just hang your hat on this and say it's going to go well, but the Avs Pro Scouting Department has a track record of these things saying we are seeing something a layer deeper than the you know, the, the, the raw results that we think this is going to fit. And I, I, I would actually be surprised if he didn't get a scoring bump this year. So, again, that is his, uh, to reiterate, that is his on-ice shooting. That's the on-ice shooting percentage, not his shooting percentage. Yep. That is what the Predators shot as a team with him on the ice. 6.9 for a forward of his caliber is quite low. His actual shooting percentage last year, I believe it was pretty high. It wasn't as high as 21-22 where it was. Yeah, I mean, it's 14, but... man. Yeah. He shot 22 the year before, but he is also a he is a career 11.8 percent shooter. So again, like you would like to, sh- the answer is shoot more, please. Yes, yeah. he's been a pretty good shooter most of the years in his career. He's... Well, and and I think the yeah, part of wow. that that's encouraging is outside of years in which he's been injured in Nashville. Uh, he's found ways to produce, even if he's not shooting. He he has multiple years of 47 assist season, 50 assist season. Back yeah. in Columbus, he had a 45 assist season. I he, mean, dude, he, he, he hasn't had a season where he's played what you would consider to be a full year. He hasn't had one of those where he's been under a 50, yeah. you know, 54 in one year. I was going to say 55 point guy. Close any enough. year where he's gotten any health luck, he's 54 plus. Yeah, I, except for the weird year, the COVID year, he had 48 games in a 56 game season, and mm, yes, yeah. wasn't any good that year. But yeah. we've also yeah. learned the numbers from those seasons should be Our completely anomalies. ignored. Yeah, for sure. Except yeah. for McDavid's hundred points because that was super cool. But <laughs> yeah, everybody, few, everybody man. else, ignore that. It was it was total nonsense. It was not meaningful. So. Yeah. 
I don't care about that season at all when I look at his career. I completely just, in my mind, I blank it out for every player. Right. Uh, and for him, you're talking about, like, it's a, Jesse, you're right in that when he's, when he's been healthy and he's had just a normal season, he's been productive. Yeah. Now, that's a big caveat, given that the Avs, and I know Colorado's <laughs> fan base is going to be ultra touchy about this coming off the year it was, but it's fair. Like, you worry about a guy that's had a couple of injured seasons, not, not like, deeply injured this last year was maybe the most uh the most that he's ever had to struggle with injuries since the beginning of his career but yeah 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 i i don't think you should i'll put it this way i don't think that this trade ends up being a bad one for colorado unless injuries crop up yeah which it's hard to it's hard to like call a trade a bad one if a guy gets hurt yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, if it's like if it's like Sean Monahan, where you're like, "Hey, all he's done is be hurt for the last four years." That's you know not what you're getting here. yourself into. It, exactly, yeah. <laughs> like you're getting yourself into a, like you walk in, where you're like, "Hey, we're flipping a coin." That's not. That's not this. That's not this situation. Well, here. and honestly, from a trade perspective, I don't know if there's anything that makes this ever a bad trade. Yeah, I mean. It's fair. That's fair. Every, maybe say every trade is a gamble. Great acquisition, but like, you got to You just got a guy free. that could potentially play in your top six for the next two years and be a key part of your team for nothing. <laughs> Completely for cost. nothing. Yep. Like, look at it this way: if Ryan Johansson was entering free agency this year instead of this, and the Avs paid him four million for two years, you'd be over the moon about it, right? Yeah, I was gonna so. say. I was gonna say earlier if you paid Ryan O'Reilly. Two years at four million dollars, yeah. and they ended up having the same. They ended up having the same season as Ryan Johansson. Like you'd be thrilled, right? Like it would yep. be a home. You'd be like, "Oh my god!" Yep, that's where we are. Obviously, just ignoring the differences in them as players. Yeah, you're There's not. No way the, they would the, have the same season. For sure. The point <laughs> is, is that getting an actual guy, like a bona fide, like somebody that could be two C. And, and look, I, not to. I know this is. I'm, I'm shocked that they ate four million dollars for the next. AJ, you took the words out of my mouth, dude. I was just about to say, like, not to, not to harp on this again. Now at the end I'm of the sorry. show, and I mean that in a good way. But like, I was like, oh, I feel silly for bringing this back up. But I just like, I'm, I just, I can't believe they got them to eat half. Right. Yeah. Ha- full retention, not I oh, will retain a million for you. Four right. yeah. million dollars. I, would we? Because he like briefly came up as we were talking about two C options the other day. Yeah. And I know that we were kind of like, I don't know about this. And it was a lot of it because it was like, like what are you going to do dollars. on the contract? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Like you weren't gonna you weren't gonna take on eight million. You're not gonna take the full boat, but none of us were sitting here thinking it was gonna be fifty percent retained and free. Right, right, right. Keep in mind, Nashville is also retaining on Eckholm for the next three years. Now it's not a lot of money, yeah. but there's another retention slot held. So they only yeah. have one retention slot left. So this is kind of a big commitment for them. It's it's interesting though, because it's funny because we're like, wow, they're eating four million dollars for the next two years, but They've got tons of space. Yeah, I, that's like, the weird part to me. What <laughs> are you doing with twenty million dollars of cap space in a bad free agency market? For me, I'm like, this is Dmitry Orlov, isn't it? Oh, they're about to trade for Ek and oh, and sign cool. Dmitry Orlov. Yeah. Ernie Trotz is like, get me back my defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, that's wow, wild. dude. I uh, yeah, I mean. Really, the, the, I, like you said, we mentioned his name, but yeah, this one PLD still, I, I was really surprised when I got the text uh, this morning. And then I think I audibly reacted when I saw the 50%. Like, I, I just, I, I wasn't, I, I was expecting a, yeah, they're holding on to, like you said, Rudo, a million, two yeah. million, 50%, four million bucks. I mean, that. It, it, it's a good bit of business. It, it went no matter how you slice it, zero to a hundred. Where I was like, "Boy, Ryan Johansson at six or seven million is there two C better work?" And then I was like, "Oh no, it's actually four million. Oh, okay, great." Yeah, and it cool. costs. And well, by the way, all those trade assets that you were worried that they were going to lose trying to f- figure this out, they still got them. Yeah, and, <laughs> Dude, maybe and then I would of- just 
most importantly, they still have Sam Gerrard if mm-hmm. they need to do something. If it doesn't work and they get to the deadline and Elias Lindholm is still aflame, you can still do that if yeah, you mm-hmm. need to. Like, it, it opens up the door for, one, this to work, and it's very cheap, and you feel very good about it, and it keeps the door open for, this doesn't work, you still have all, and then you have all the assets that you need to try and go fix it again. So it's it, it's really, really hard for me to feel overly negative about it because yep. it just doesn't cost anything. Like, yeah. That's so much of the risk in a trade is is when you're like, oh man, we we value this guy because we're afraid of giving this guy up, you know, like. Ugh. But this is it. Fe- it feels like a win right off the bat for Colorado mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Result of play, kind of, of course, you have it, to wait and see. But it kind of feels like. Uh, does anybody remember the name of the guy that got included in the Andre Burakovsky trade? No, yeah, Warsawski. No. <laughs> it wasn't. He, he was one of those where Sofsky was in on, but I forgot. I mean, was he back to Pittsburgh or something? I don't know. Uh, I don't remember his name either. <laughs> well, then the ultimate LOL is going to be if Alex Galchenyuk doesn't sign in Nashville and he has to bring him back. I mean, that would be awesome. I also wonder if he just goes to Anaheim. Yeah. I, I, I imagine he'll sign in Nashville. He seemed last year like a pretty loyal kind of guy um Just for my own sanity it was scott kosmachuk yeah i knew it was some random ass forward that was on an expiring deal for my own sanity uh but yeah i also just did play through that scenario that wouldn't it be funny if galchenyuk's like ah, i just don't know resigns with the abs <laughs> i yeah i I don't know. Right today, I think you got to tip your cap to the Avs front office once again. They and keep, they keep finding things. Yeah, and God, just to reiterate all the points, the basic bullet points of this is: you have your two C, you still have all of your ass, your trade assets, you have all of your financial flexibility moving forward to keep Devon Taves, uh, and and like to keep your defense intact. Yep. That that you so highly value as you should, but. You still have enough. You still have enough money to go out and get meaningful improvements. Yep. You got yep. better, and you allowed yourself to continue getting better, and it cost you nothing. Yep. So it's just a win. It's just a win, man. I just we were talking about low end two C options, and I think Joe Hansen was 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 on that list, but. Yep. The same way that we came to the conclusion with, even if it's Kevin Hayes and it's if they retain and they got to a number you're comfortable with and you don't give for any free. assets up for literal free, what do you do? <laughs> I, like? You just can't get that upset about getting a two C for free. Yep. Mm-hmm. My yep. gosh. And for people that don't think he's a two C, let's let it play out a bit here. Yep. Let's maybe. He's been a two C for like years. Right. <clears throat> so yeah. he is a two C. <laughs> he just is. I'm you with you. At, it, yeah, you, you I think the issue is that he's that. always been a two C, and that's been the problem. Yeah, Nashville wanted him to be a one C, and he just right. said that. They got Nazem Kadri. Kadri was a three C when they went and got him. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I like this one for the Avs. I think it's a good deal. If, I if, would if, also say somebody, somebody in chat was said that they were worried about uh, Johansson being mid. And that Kadri spoiled them. Kadri spoiled everybody because he had a career year unlike any other, like go, out of nowhere. Go look at if, the first two years of Kadri no, for go, real. Go, like. go line up. Go line up Nazem Kadri and Ryan Johansson's careers and tell me which guy is which. Do it blind. Player A, player B. Line them up side by side. Compare, compare them to each other. And then take out the 87-point season as the major outlier so that you know. <laughs> Just don't look up the suspension numbers, and it'll be pretty similar. <laughs> and you'll and you'll see, like right, like Ryan Johansson as a two C is. Uh, we already kind of answered this question, but we did get two dollars from Jason, who says, "Does this sh- now open up to make a luxury move?" What is a luxury move? I assume is it like to maybe pay an extra million dollars somewhere else to get well, to get a high end Landy replacement? I, I yeah. think the luxury move is keeping JT Comper. Mm-hmm. Sure. 
where so, maybe yeah. maybe they will pay. <laughs> they might end up paying more for their three C than their four C, their their two C, if they keep JT Comfort and they pay him obviously more than four million dollars. I mean, are you are you slotting JT in as your second line winger at that point? No, I'm slotting him in at three C, which is where he should be. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, if if you're if you can go into opening night, McKinnon, Johansson, Comfer, I think you feel really good about your center depth. Oh yeah, I feel that way. If it's New Hook, sure, I do. I do too. I. It, the, if you but, keep JT, the question of what does Alex Newhook become is very real it, to me. It's yeah, I would agree with that. But again, this is now in the Avs court, right? They can keep JT if they want. Maybe they prefer Erod there. Maybe they want to go out and get some other piece to fill X spot in their lineup that they feel needs addressing. It again, we've said for months now that everything should fall into place after they acquire their two Z. They've done that now, and now the work really begins for this organization. It gives you better clarity on Bowen Byram, Alex yep. Newhook deals, all of yep. that stuff. Yep, 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 yep. It, it just – regardless of how you feel about the player, the abs are – this is a step that you have to feel good about. I just, I just don't see how you can come away very negatively from this. Had they yeah. done this at the deadline, people would have been smacking high fives. <laughs> Probably, honestly. Um, I would have been like, why'd you just trade for a guy who's out for the rest of the year? <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm just being uh, I, I'm good with what we've covered. Anything else you guys want to add on this? Uh, yeah, everybody go redo your roast my roster. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> All of the rosters are dead now. You've got to go do a new I'd one. I'd be willing to bet most of them. Didn't have this. Also, probably like, need to be redone. If you had this before it happened, DM me with your yeah. answer, and we will put yep. it on the show. <laughs> and we will we will give you the flowers because yeah. that would have been sick. <laughs> uh, anyway, I guess we're gonna wrap up this emergency pod here on Johansson. Uh, I know Jesse, you already had a video out with your thoughts on Twitter. You guys can go yep. check that out. I'm gonna go Should pull some highlights real agent. quick. Yeah, there I'm you go. Gonna, You'll have a written piece from me, and there may or may not be a film room on him coming, depending on what I find on video. So there you go. Plenty more content coming your way from DNVR. We appreciate 450 of you showing up randomly on a Saturday morning-ish uh, because the apps did a thing. Morning. Pre- yeah. Pre-noon. I mean, it's morning in the in our time zone, so it counts. Yeah. Uh, it's, yes, it's morning where we live. <laughs> We got a lot of, like, people around the world, all right? It's probably night to some of our viewers. It's morning where we live, and we're the ones that matter. It's our show. True. (laughs) And our show is ending. Goodbye.